I have just been betrayed by the two people I trusted most. Author is mentioned in the description. I'm sorry if this is annoying I can't stop thinking about it and for some reason I feel more secure venting it to strangers rather than people who know me and can judge me more in depth. I won't lie, I have been suspecting my fiancé was having an affair, but I didn't have any solid evidence to accuse him even then I had a feeling that I didn't want to dig any deeper because I was scared in case what I was suspecting was true. Twelve days ago I came home from visiting my mom's and I headed upstairs to wake my fiancé as he had a habit of sleeping in way past 2 p.m. and then complained that I didn't wake him. I opened the door and all I see is my practically naked sister rushing to try and get out of a lingerie bodysuit that belonged to me. I don't know how to explain it but my mind just went blank like whatever I was thinking about beforehand suddenly disappeared you know when you stand up too fast and your head just gets a little dizzy. That's what I felt alongside the feeling of sickness brewing in my stomach. I stood there for a solid 30 seconds looking at the two people I trusted most looked more shocked than I felt. My fiancé jumped out of bed and suddenly came up with excuses it went from it was an accident. If I was lonely and needed sexual relief, I probably should add my best friend killed herself two weeks ago the girl I knew for over 15 years was suddenly out of my life and even though I'm surrounded by people I've told my fiancé about how alone, devastated and guilty that I couldn't have done anything to help her. I just left. I didn't take my car because at that point my eyes were about to just started flooding. I walked to my friend's 10 minutes and confided in her about what happened. The amount of grief I felt from not only losing a BFF but losing my relationships with my fiancé and sister within the same two-week period. Now that I'm sitting down to write this I don't know if any of these relationships will ever be mended or could ever go back to the way they were. I don't understand why my sister of all people would do this. There was never any favoritism toward any of us for her to feel spite. I have never intentionally tried to hurt her. I gave her shelter when she had no place to go and despite her not paying a single penny I bought her food that she liked, made sacrifices in my own home for her, hell she kept ranting about how our living room walls gave her a headache they were white. So I took time out of my day to paint it a nice grey color. My fiancé too. I gave that man everything I was willing to have kids with him despite the fact I always wanting to be child free. I was going to start a family so that he was happy. I gave him comfort whenever something bad happened to him I spent hours watching unfunny movies that he seemed to find hilarious. I even gave him a fucking locket with our anniversary photo and that he decided to wear while sticking it in my sister. These last days I've went from sadness to being angry then disgusted and it's a constant cycle I've not been able to get out of. Despite being smoking free for two years I've picked up a cigarette I used to be heavily addicted to smoking from 16 minus 21 I'm currently 23. There's the moments when I go to do something but automatically lose interest and even times over dinner. I don't know how to explain it properly as I've never felt this way but I'm bored. Of eating I have to physically force myself to eat something and I have no idea what's going on to my body at this very moment. For some reason it feels as if I went into hibernation. I sleep almost 17 hours a day now and even for the rest of those hours I'm still tired and force myself to stay awake. Both of them asked to meet up on Wednesday my sister's exact message was, Hey I know you probably don't want to hear from me right now but can you meet me and fiancé we want to talk and we want you to properly hear us out. The situation you found us in was not the most ideal situation to put you in a good headspace to talk about it right there. And then, please let us explain I love you and you're my sister and I don't want to lose you, please. I think it's too late. It was too late from whenever this affair started or even when you started getting sexual desires for my fiancé I miss my sister but according to what I saw the sister I miss and whoever my sister is now are not the same person. I haven't talked to anyone yet except the one friend I'm currently staying with at the moment. I'm scared I'll be seen as a failure of a future wife. But now I don't even think I want to be a wife anymore but I guess I'd rather share to strangers than people who know me personally, I apologize again. Hi, me again, I'm back and editing the post. At first I was just going to dump this vent to get it out of my mind but I want to say thank you for everyone's advice, I guess this counts as a small update. I'm unsure, so far nothing big has really happened. The friend I'm staying with has offered to come with me to talk to my parents about this also including my older brother. She honestly been my rock through this whole situation and I couldn't ask for a better support system from one person though I don't plan on putting that on her shoulders since it would be stressful to be the designated support system friend. I'm currently looking into therapy for both my grief and the affair. I'm not well versed legal wise so I'm currently in the process of looking for a lawyer just so legally I know I'm in the clear in case there would be a loophole somewhere. I did contact my sister and another copy pasted message I replied. 
I don't plan on meeting with you on Wednesday. I'll talk to you when I'm ready and whether it be tomorrow or years from now it doesn't matter you both owe me my own time to heal after the two people I've trusted most went behind my back. Betrayed my trust all under my roof that you both live rent free under. Bye. I can't lie. I was almost ready to tell her to meet me there and then when she sent that message. But I've realized and through help of people in the comments that I can't thank enough I need time to work on myself mentally rather than repair a long gone relationship with my sister. Though I don't plan on going back to my ex and never will. Maybe one day I'll hear him out but today is not that day. As for now I'm getting ready to try and explain to my parents everything that happened. I don't have any evidence between my ex and sister however I do have their messages they sent me which traps one another I think that's the right wording. But anyways thank you all for the advice and kind comments and messages have a good day or night. Relevant comments. Commenter, you have nothing to apologize for and nothing to be ashamed about. None of this was your fault. You've suffered a horrible betrayal by a family member and a partner. Again, none of this was your fault. To hell with your ex-fiancé. To hell with your sister. No amount of apologies or excuses should smooth over a betrayal of this magnitude. Can you move out to a more permanent location? Can your friend help you to pick up your things? Have you considered speaking to your family about this? And again, none of this is your fault. And nobody is going to fault you for not being able to be your best right now. Lean on the other people in your life right now if you can. It's gonna be a bumpy ride, but you can pull through this. Opus honestly I've not thought about my plans so far. The house we lived in I inherited from my grandma so as far as I know I can kick both of him out. Though I'm not well versed in a lot of legal stuff so I'm currently trying to take a look at my options in case I need a lawyer or anything like that. As for family I haven't said a word yet I've not really spoken to anyone except the friend I'm currently staying at. I plan to tell them eventually about everything though I'm just trying to better myself mentally before telling anyone else. Update, one year and one month later. I honestly forgot about this account until the friend I was staying with I'll just name her Alice sent me a TikTok where one of those AI voices reads a Reddit post and you'd never guess whose post it was reading. Mine lol. I wanted to log back on as I wanted to thank the people who showed me more kindness than people I was supposed to trust and also the people who seemed interested in my life. Can't blame them when I read something that has some drama I do also become invested. I'll start with myself. I got myself into therapy and began taking care of myself and myself only. Entering my relationship with my ex I hadn't noticed how much time I spent taking care of him and neglecting myself and my needs. It was one of those relationships that you didn't notice the faults until you leave and become a sort of specter of what the relationship actually was. I think part of me was so invested in believing he was a good guy because how past relationships had hurt me before that I tried very hard to hold on to the idea that I had finally found someone who was different. Loving the wrong person can lead to devastating consequences and I just happened to do that exact thing. Whenever I had seen stories before about people staying with their cheating partner I was so quick to criticize how stupid that would be and thought what did you expect when they cheat again again. But now that I've been through that it was eye-opening. It's not easy to just up and leave behind someone you had invested so much love, time and effort into. Yes you can lose all love for that person in seconds but you never lose the feeling of the love you felt before if that makes sense. After I found out I did want to try and work it out for many reasons but through the help of my therapist she helped me realize that I wanted to stay because after my best friend's death he was the only thing that felt familiar in the moment. Everyone is growing up and moving away in my life. I was in a position that I felt so alone. But to expect people not to change is to not allow growth. They moved out of my house and I moved back in. I won't lie it was lonely. I was so used to other voices in my home that it felt empty. But an empty room is open to hundreds of ideas in my opinion. I redecorated with the help of friends and some family and even though I had lost two people thanks to them I was able to make memories that I'll cherish. I won't try and cover up that before I got therapy I was indeed a wreck. I was just so tired of disappointment from my ex that the cheating was the final blow that knocked me back into reality. My sister's betrayal hurt way worse because we share the same parents, we used to share bunk beds and without my knowledge shared the same partner. But I owe them a thanks for allowing me to remove people who clearly had no good intentions. I will always love my sister even though I don't want to but sometimes there are strings attached to people that just can't be cut and she is one of them. I'll never welcome her into my home again but I'll answer the phone if she was at her lowest. Even though she was a snake in my garden doesn't mean she's not my sister. She did try to call a couple of weeks after she had moved out and at first I was angry at her. I honestly just wanted to hit her with everything I had but when I answered and heard her voice I just felt sorry for her. 
Everyone in my family knew how terrible she was and just for some pleasure she ruined the last relationship that was trying to help her. I just think she's a very self-destructive person that will never learn. They were constantly staying at different friends' houses because they couldn't afford to rent anywhere. My sister is apparently cheating on my ex with random people, and none of them are able to hold down a job. I would say karma but it's just sad. My ex traded someone who became a pushover for him, who gave him everything she could for someone who couldn't give a shit about him. I wish them well. I deserve better than that and I just hope one day they grow up and begin to become better people than who they are right now. My family no longer talk to my sister so she's on her own some things I hear about her reminds me of just a confused child. However I did see her on New Year's Eve, me and some friends went clubbing because why not? And we unintentionally ran into her. At first I tried to ignore her and just pretend I didn't see her but she ended up coming up to me and tried to talk to me as if nothing happened. As the ex-partner I wanted to slap her, but as her sister I wanted to hug her and ask her why. But I just left. After we remove labels of sister or her partner's ex or whatever we share the same DNA, and that will always be the thing that connects us. As for my dating life, I'm currently seeing someone and have been doing since November 23rd. I deserve happiness, and I deserve a lot more than what my ex gave me. However I'm still dealing with issues from that relationship that has me in moments of guilt of not giving my full trust. I'm happy that he understands and listens to me when I have concerns but I don't want to constantly lie with issues I carried because of someone else. We're taking it slow and he always reassures me. He's a good guy and I'm happy he's in my life. I will find my peace with the situation eventually but I'll have to work to get to that point and that's okay. Sorry for the whole ramble but this is still sort of event post. I have a lot of mixed emotions that I haven't been able to untangle. Thank you to everyone who listened, reached out and gave advice I appreciate that so much and I hope everyone had a good new year. Relevant comments. Commenter 1. I'm curious how the meeting with your parents went, or if you ever end up meeting the both of them for her BS excuses, not that it matters. I'm glad you are better and moving on. Opus I did tell my parents, the whole conversation was really hard for me. They were furious but it was obvious by how my dad was responding to things I was saying he was much more angry at my sister than my mom which I understand since he came from a broken home due to his father's infidelity. My mom wanted to go LC at first because she didn't want to outright cut off her daughter, and I understood but I didn't tell them the truth with the intent she be cut off, and I did let them know that all I wanted from the conversation was an understanding that I will not be in the same room never mind the same building as her at the same time. My dad did call me one evening to let me know that my sister and my ex showed up for a surprise dinner and gave a sob story about how things happen. The funniest thing they said was sometimes people fall in love with the wrong person to meet the right one, said by the woman who currently cheats on the man she supposedly loves. My sister did get fully cut off after she got caught stealing from my aunt's house. She was supposed to babysit and stole all sorts of things like electronics and my nephew's stuff. As for meeting up with them, I did not. I decided that at the time it would not help me at all to meet up with them and I'm just assuming they wanted to try and clear their guilty conscience. I do get occasional messages from random accounts on social media from them but I've choose to ignore them and stop focusing on something I know will only hurt me in the future. Commenter 2, your sister is a piece of shit. She's still with the guy that she and him broke your heart. You're a better person than me, she could have been my Siamese twin twin sister I'm cutting her off for good. Snakes don't change they shed to become bigger and deadlier. Good luck. Opus I'm just assuming but I think it's one of those situations when both people ruined everything for nothing just to stay together so they don't end up alone. And from how long I've known both of them I can confidently say that they're the type of people who can't handle being on their own even for a little while so it makes sense that two people so alike ended up together. 